And then light was created. All right. So now let's go to the scripture that everybody gets kind of mixed up on. Uh, in Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach, chapter 43. And let's read, let's start at verse one. So it says, the pride of the height, the clear firmament, the beauty of heaven with his glorious, his glorious show. The sun, when it appeareth, declare at his rising a marvelous instrument, the work of the most high. Look at that. So he's showing you what the, what the sun is an instrument, a marvelous instrument that the most high created, right? So now at noon, it parches the country who can abide the burn the burning heat thereof so it's showing you at noon remember we said that the sun was used to gauge the hours of the day all right which it does that's why you have what you would call a sundial a sundial does what it lets you know what hour you're in okay so that's why i say noon day about the sixth hour the you know etc all right so now it says let's drop down and hit verse six so now it says, he made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of time and a sign of the world, right? So all nations have this instrument called, um, have these two instruments, the sun and the moon. It was created for everybody, all right, to use as a gauge of time, etc. So now it says he made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world for the moon is the sign of feast so the moon lets us know it, it declares when our feast start real quick i want to hold this let me go to the book of leviticus 23 we start at verse 1 and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, meaning holy assemblies. Even these are my feast. All right. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest in holy convocation, meaning an assembly. Ye shall do no work therein. It is a Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings, right? So the Lord shows you, it's showing you something about the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day operates completely different from the Holy Feast, which we're going to see something here. So it says, these are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations or assemblies, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. So he says, he's showing you that the Sabbath day operates separately from the feasts that are being declared in their exact seasons, all right? So from Passover, which is kept in its proper season in the spring, Pentecost, which is kept in its proper season, uh, the spring slash summer, then, you know, you go into the autumn feast, which is Feast of Tabernacles, Day of Atonement, etc., all right? Then the winter feast, uh, dedication, Purim, uh, Nicanor, all of those feasts, right? They are declared in their seasons, right? And you calculate those feast days by the moon, all right? So I wanted just to bring that out, okay? So in their seasons, all right? So now that's what the moon is for. Let's go back to Ecclesiasticus chapter 43. Let's pick it up and hit verse 7 now. So it says, <clears throat> for the moon is a sign of feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection, right? So he says, so now this is where the confusion actually comes in for some, all right? Or I, I could say a lot of people that don't understand. So it says, for the moon is a sign of feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. So when it talks about a light that decreaseth in her perfection, right? So remember, we know that the moon... We know that the moon, right, when it's uh, full, is that means it's completely illuminated, all right? So we know that that is what we call the 15th day, and I will show you this, all right? So now when it talks about it decreaseth, all right, in her perfection, so it's perfect when it's full, and then it begins to decrease, meaning you begin to see darkness. 
This people has nothing to do with the new moon. Understand this. This has nothing to do with the new moon. All right. Has nothing to do with it. OK, it is showing you, you know what I'm saying? The process in which it goes from light to darkness. All right. That's all it's doing. OK, the process of how the moon when it is full and then it starts to decrease in uh, in, in, in the darkness begins to, you know, to overtake the light of the moon. You see that? That's all it's doing. That's all the scripture is basically showing you. So when you look at it in its most simplistic form. All right. It's not hard. It's not complicated to understand. But you have to understand, man, the most high don't make these scriptures hard to understand at all. So it says the month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above shining in the firmament of heaven. You see that? So it says increasing wonderfully in her change. Right. So it goes from from light to darkness to light again. So you have. The 15th day, which goes to the first day of the month, which is darkness. And then it goes back to the 15th day. All right. 15 days later, you get light. OK. And this and it's shown to us very simply in even even tools, you know what I'm saying, that have been created. All right. So let's check this out. This is an example of what you would call, you know, of the moon. All right. So now this is the new moon. All right. Due to pop, you know, regardless of popular belief or whatever the case may be, this is the new moon. All right. So now the new moon is dark. OK, so now let's go back to let's go back 15 days before it hits this phase. All right. Bam. Let's see what the scripture talks about. Full moon, full moon. Right. So this is full moon. I'm just using this as an example. I right? don't worry about the date. OK, so this is a full moon. It says 100 percent here. 15 days. OK, the 15th day of the month. All right. Everybody knows this. Why doesn't IUIC know? Why doesn't those who basically profess that doctrine know or understand this? So now it says so now it's showing you 15 days. All right. This is 100 percent. It is fully illuminated. A light that decreaseth in her perfection check this out the light that decreases in her perfection goes all the way to what the new moon all right the dark moon okay and then it says increasing wonderfully in her changing right so bam let's look at it again day four day five 50 percent 59 percent 67 so 84, 91, 96, 99, bam, full moon again, 15th day of the month, all right, for signs, for seasons, for days, for years, you see that, so now you mean to tell me when the children of Israel left the land of Egypt, right, or before they left the land of Egypt, when the Lord told Moses, right, he said, this month shall be the beginning of months unto you. Right. So you mean that the Lord God was showing them this being the the moon, this being uh, the, the first day of the month for the children of Israel? Absolutely not. All right. Regardless, you can look up all the information that you need to look up, look up on. You can look into the farmer's almanac. Remember, Benjamin, Benjamin Banneker created one. This was a Negro man. All right. An Israelite man that created the farmer's almanac. He'll show you the exact same information in here that the so-called white man had took from us. All right. So now. So it says here, full moon. Bam. All right. So. Did the children of Israel, did, Mo, did the Lord show Moses that the full moon was the first day of the month? Absolutely not. That means if you want to calculate Passover, okay, according to IUIC, bam. All right, so now this is the so-called full moon. And then 14 days later, right?
Let's see. It's kind of it's going to be kind of difficult. I'm just gauging it here a little bit. 14 days later. All right, let's look at the 25th. So this is what your Passover basically looked like. When it says the, the, the scriptures show us that the moon is a sign of feast, right? So now when you look up those festival days, many of the new, many of the feasts that we have, they occur on the 15th day of the month. All right. So that means Feast of Tabernacles will basically be on a full moon, Passover on a full moon. You see that? So that means, you know, when we kept Passover this year in 2018, our lovely brothers and sisters in IUIC, this was the first of the year for them. And then they kept the Passover, they kept Passover somewhere in April. All right. Don't remember the exact date, but of course, you know, it is what it is. All right. So, of course, you know, just to, to briefly explain it, you know what I mean? You know, the scriptures uh, in Sirach. 43 and verses 7 and 8 it's not it's not speaking about no new moon you know what i'm saying being a full moon whatsoever it's just showing you how the moon goes through its phase its phases from light to darkness you know what i'm saying from darkness to light that's it all right you can hate it love it you know what i mean think nothing of it you know if your spirit is telling you one thing and you know you want to follow another then you know, please, by all means, you know, do what you do. All right. But those of those of us that, that understand what the word of the Lord says, you know, we're going to stick to what the word of the Lord says. Right. And properly research fact. OK, so with that, I say Shalom to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Peace.